Hi, Robin Belmont here. This is one of a series of videos looking at SCM. In the previous video, we looked at a regression model with three predictors, one output. Um, we're going to carry on looking at that model. This is an additional video. I've done a very short one. Um, several of the students were quite worried because I didn't mention p-values in the previous video. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can look at the various p-values that you can get from a standard regression output in the SCM model environment. So, to begin with, let's just refresh the information we had from the previous session. Here is the output from a standard regression type analysis. We've got an estimate for the intercept for each of the predictors, a standard error, a t-value, and a p-value. Also, we have a, what's known as the omnibus test which is testing to see if any of those are not equal to zero. And that is an F statistic. And we see that it's got a p-value of 4.8 to the minus 11. So basically that means 0 0.00000 times 10, 4839. So it's highly significant. And we'd expect that looking at the individual significance levels of each predictor. And the intercept. Right now, how do we get these values from the SCM environment? That's what we'll look at now. So here is my first example of how to create a p-value in the SCM environment. What we have here is our two models, but I've added an interaction term here, which is interaction between education and population density there at the top education and population density. And you'll see that I've set the values differently for each of these two models. This is just a clone on the left hand side, but I've made that parameter equal to zero. And it's a fixed parameter, it's not free. Whereas in the other model, it's a free parameter. So we can compare these two models just by right clicking on one of them and dragging and then we get these little bubble. We hover over the little bubble. We have a p-value of 0 0.0056. And that's telling us that if we add that interaction term, there's a difference between the models of 0 0.00556. Um, possibly you would assume that was significant and want to keep the interaction in the model. We are not going to. We can assume that's insignificant for our purposes. So we're going to carry on now and look at these models in more detail without the interaction term in the model. So here we have three versions of our regression model without the interaction term. Education, population density, non-white, being regressed on mortality. Um, if you notice the top left-hand side one, I've made all three of regression weights equal zero by making them fixed values. So that is in effect saying that education, population, density and non-white do not relate to mortality at all. We do not help predict that value in mortality. On the right hand side at the top, you'll see what I've done instead of the zero value for each of the regression weights, I've made them equal the mean value of all three. So they've taken the mean value the three regression weights together. Now the interesting thing is if you compare those two models, it's barely significantly different. It's 0 0.036. It's actually not significantly different. And that's because you could class the left-hand side one with the zeros as the classic null hypothesis for regression omnibus test. That's what it's doing. It's assuming that all the regression weights are equal to zero when we do that omnibus F test. On um, the right hand side, I think probably that is more realistic, so I've done that one as well. You could call that my alternative null hypothesis. Um, but you can compare both of those to the actual model which we look which we created with estimates for each of the regression lines. Just scroll down. We can see here that that is the regression that we created in the last session with each three paths free to vary. 
they're estimated. And you can see that both of my null models, the classic one on the left-hand side, gives us a p-value of 1.006 to the minus 11. So that's basically 0 0.000000 times 11, 1006. And on the right-hand side, my alternative type null hypothesis, it's pretty much the same. It's e to the minus 11, so it's just a slightly different value, but it's still e to the minus 11. 11 so it's a huge small number if you see what I mean. How does that compare with the actual p-value that you get from the traditional regression? Well here is the output once again and we can see that our f statistic was 27 which we ignore. But the p-value if we look here is 4.8 to the minus 11 which is both those values at the minus 11, so pretty much the same. So that is equivalent to our F-test. We'll now just look back at that. And now we have, remember, T-values and a P-value for each of the predictors. We'll look how we obtain those now in SCM environment. So here we have our models again, but this time I've set just one of the paths to equal zero. What I'm saying is that the education to mortality regressor weight is equal to zero. Look a little further down, I've done the same for the next one, population density and mortality, and if we look further down, I've done exactly the same for the non-white to mortality. So now we have three models that only differ by setting one of the paths to equal zero. We can compare each of those models to the model where we allow all three to vary and we get a p-value for each of these. We can compare these p-values with what we had with the standard regression output for each of these predictors and we'll see they're pretty much the same. So for education we have 0 0.00027 and we have here 0.00016, not much difference there. Next one, we've got 0 0.037. Here we have 0 0.0302. And for the last one, we have something to the minus 8. We have something to the minus 9 there. So there is no difference really between them. They're all pretty the same. What I think this does is highlight what we are actually doing when we look at those p-values for each of the inputs. We could also have obtained the information we wanted by looking at the estimate summary in Onyx. And there's the estimate summary for Onyx. And we can see we have an estimate and a standard error. And if you divide the estimate by the standard error, you get a t-value. You can then use an online calculator, or I use R, to find out what the p-value is associated, associated with that t-value. And I've done that here. And we can see that we compare the results between the standard R linear regression, t-value produces those t-values and p-values. Then we can look at the onyx diagram, which uses maximum likelihood to get its p-values. And then we can compare onyx's summary window with the estimate of the standard error as I said and then looking up in R what the p-values are. I've given you the R code if you are interested in it just there. And you can see they're all pretty equivalent. So what we've actually done is carried out the standard p-value tests that you get from an output. Um, it should not really be encouraged and the p-values I'm not um, a fan of at all but a of the students I said were getting very panicky, they couldn't see any p-values around. You'll be able to get this handout I've created explaining all this from my website. And I'll just show you the website again, so you remember where it is. robin-beaumont.co.uk slash rbook. Um, that will redirect you to the floppy bunny, but robin-beaumont.co.uk slash rbook get you to this page if you click on the SEM course.
Remember, you can also buy my book, um, which has got over 65 chapters in it explaining these subjects in detail. Bye.